Rub up your engines! All right, it's tire time. Look at the tires. They're worn down to the wear bars. And these have been on it for like six, seven years. They're starting to get cracked. But you can see they're getting smoother down to the wear bar. So it's time for new ones. Now, these tires are perfectly fine on dry pavement. You can put slicks on in dry pavement. But in the rain, it won't push the rain. And you have a tendency of hydroplaning. So it's off to the tire store. So here I am at the tire store. As you can see, there's tires everywhere here. This is what you want. Fresh tires, they sell a lot of tires. They're not old and dry rotted. And I found this particular company interesting because they have a very good website online. It's a large corporation, this is one of their stores. So I was able to look up the type of tire I wanted, what styles I have, what they cost. It's all above board. If they don't have what you want, generally by the next day they can have it delivered and have it put on. So you get a wide choice. You're not just stuck with, well, we only got this one here. You get a really good choice of tires. Now, I realize that buying tires is just like buying eggs or milk or even car batteries. They go bad over time. They will dry rot just sitting. So you want to go to a place that has a huge volume of tires so they're all new tires and they're not sitting there dry rotting. And, of course, you can choose what kind of tires you want. You might want rain tires. You might want more aggressive tires if you plan on doing a little bit of off-roading. And if you really want aggressive off-road, they've got that kind of stuff, too. See, these Falcons are very aggressive tires. Sure, they're going to make noise, but you're going to get traction. If you don't want to go that aggressive, you can go about a little bit less aggressive, but still relatively aggressive. If you're performance oriented, you can go for these really aggressive sport tires. If you're fast, you can get high performance tires. And let's say you're selling a car, you just want to get cheaper tires so they look good. Hey, you get Chinese made ones. Now, this particular store sells relatively quality stuff. They don't sell the real cheapies, but you can go to real real deep discount places and they can sell you really cheap chinese tires <laughs> not the safest things in the world but if you're selling a car and you have four brand new tires on it you're going to be able to sell it faster if the tires are all bald and it's always better to pick it ahead of time because let's say i would have let those tires slide and i was on a trip and they blew then you're at the mercy of wherever you are, whatever they have in stock, you're in some small town, maybe they got a tire that fits your car, but it's sitting on a shelf for five, six years, and it's already dry rotted. Plan ahead with tires. So here we have it, brand new tires. Lots of tread on them, good for water. And if you remember from the past, I took them off because I put a little silicone sealer on them. That way they won't fall off. This is the ridge that pushes against it, so we'll put a few dabs on just a few of them to make sure it won't fall off when we hit bumps on the road. It's a worthwhile thing to do. Try finding these. Good luck. And you just line them up, snap them on, and wipe any excess off. I got lucky that I had a spare when the one fell off when I was in Pennsylvania. If you got these expensive things, they're very hard to find. Put a little silicone on the ridge when you put them back on, then they won't fall off. They pry off with the screwdriver easy. Now I give kudos to the tire store. They did it fast. And you notice, that's the dot that's supposed to be going to those stem. That's in the correct position. And when we go to the other side, same thing, that's in the correct position. They did a good job. And they were super fast too. They opened at eight. I got there a quarter to eight. And it turns out that this particular store has a deal where you come eight o'clock in the morning, the first hour, they put tires on walk-ins. Otherwise, you're better make an appointment and set it up. That tires were replaced just a couple of years ago. They still got a ton of tread on them. You can see. Realize that the front tires on a front wheel drive car are gonna wear out faster than the rear tires. Since I've owned this car, I've been through two sets of front tires. This is the third set. So I used up two when I'm on the third. But the back, I'm still on the second set. It hasn't made it to the third set. And the way things generally go, these will probably wear out. Then I'll have to change all four because generally the back ones last twice as long. And this particular one where the engine and tranny is all in the front and the back one just rolled down the road. This is yet another reason I'm not into all-wheel drive. If this was an all-wheel drive car, I would have had to buy all four tires and spend twice as much money, which I don't have to because they're not worn out in the back. They don't wear out as fast in the back. But with an all-wheel drive vehicle, you got to change all four. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind all-wheel drive vehicles get worse gas mileage, more friction, worse gas mileage. They weigh more. They have extra drivetrain components that this thing doesn't have. So if you really don't need all-wheel drive, 
You might think of just getting a front wheel drive. It gets me where I'm going no problems at all. So now that we learned a little bit about buying tires, let's check out some of the stuff that I've been testing out. Now you remember the air compressor. All right, I've been testing it out. Now, this VVOR is oil free. This is plastic. And you might think, is it gonna hold up? Is it gonna work? Well, so far, <laughs> I've had no problems with it whatsoever. It runs my air gun fine. It runs my air ratchet. Filling up tires, power grinders. It works perfectly fine. And I do have to say it's a lot quieter than my metal ones. Now, the only downfall is, it's got a relatively small air tank. Now, as you all know, I work by myself. I'm the only guy using the air tool. The only problem I found is it will run quite a bit because it's got a small tank. So while I'm running the tools, it's turning itself on and off a lot more than my big 30 gallon one I got back in Tennessee, yeah. But it still works perfectly fine and it's only me using it. Now, if you got a shop, you can't use one of those, hook up four or five tools and it'd be running all the time to burn itself up. But I've had no problems with it. Wife likes it because it's quieter. So I gotta say, so far it gets an A plus. Now we'll see what happens over the years. I'll talk about it as time goes on. But I gotta say, it's got plenty of power to run because it's twin cylinders. It's got two cylinders and these little air filter mufflers keep it nice and quiet. It came with all the gauge systems on it. Got a drain valve if you want to get the air out. And I also can't complain about this DeWalt air ratchet that I bought. I bought it on Amazon. It's a relatively low priced one, but hey, as far as I'm concerned, it works just as good as the Ingersoll Rand one I have that was almost 200 bucks. I was happy with DeWalt tools. When I saw the price of this one on Amazon, I snapped it up and I'm really impressed. And the last thing I've been testing and talk about today is this Fido electric bike. Now my wife loves it because she's short. She likes the skinny tires because she always had a 10 speed when she was a kid. And she really likes it because it's a lighter weight bike. As far as I'm concerned, it's a decent bike. I personally wouldn't want it. It's too small for me. I like this Velowave one better. It's got a much bigger battery, fatter tires, heavier duty construction. Now this isn't a folding bike, but this is. This folds up and fits in the back seat of the Matrix quite nice. But it's rather underpowered. The hub motor's kind of weak and the battery pack isn't all that strong. But my wife likes it because it is underpowered. She gets on the big one. She says, I feel out of control. They're going to take off. Me, I like the ones that have a lot more power. But on the plus side, I had the early version that had terrible brakes, but this has hydraulic brakes, just like all the good ones. These are not cables. There's hydraulic fluid in here. So they stop much better. Now this Nacto is also a folding bike. It's got more power, right? But it's only got cable brakes. They're not nearly as good. If I would have built this bike, I would have put hydraulic brakes, not cable brakes. It's heavier, it's got a bigger battery. To me, this company made a mistake putting cheap mechanical brakes on it. We take it in the car. She drives a little one and I drive this Vitalon folding bike. It's powerful, has the fast wheels, goes a long way on a charge, and it has hydraulic brakes on it too. This is mine. Now this is bigger, but it does fold down. Hers fits in the back seat, and mine goes in the trunk. We fold the seats down, and mine goes in the trunk. So if you like little and slow a folding bike, hey, these things are fun. They do have the skinny tires. Some people like skinny tires. If you're going on bike trails, Concrete asphalt, you're gonna like the skinny tire. If you go off road, you're gonna want the fat ones like I like. Now, of course, the fat ones are much harder to pedal when your battery goes dead, where this is a lot easier to pedal. So always take that in consideration of what you're gonna buy. What are you gonna use it for? So that's it for today, and realize if you have some product you wanna send to me to test it out, feel free. Get a hold of me, Scotty Kilmer dot com and gmail.com. Just get a hold of me and I'll gladly test out any product. Honestly, I'll tell you the truth. Now, if it's a crappy product, I wouldn't advise sending it to me because I will say bad things about it if it is crappy. But if it's a good product and if it's a mediocre one, but it's a really low price, because realize I've got some really nice electric bikes, but they cost 2,500 bucks. Now, you might be happy with a $1,200 one that certainly isn't as fast, isn't as nice, the welding isn't any good, but it costs half as much. So, are they good? Do they last? Do they have problems? Are they up to snuff with everything else that's out there? And how do they fit on the price range? So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.